a number of areas are propelling the badging movement. One of it is that with the advent of online courses and open education, there's too much material for a particular instructor to do all the evaluation. There's also a lot of skill building that goes on in fields that just is difficult to evaluate. And people have many activities that they perform for which they receive no credit. Badges can be a type of informal assessment that can be brought about through working by peers and whenever you uh, participate in a product review you're giving a type of badge. Uh, you can also get a badge created by an institution. Uh, a course credential is actually a sort of badge but more badges are emerging now to document conference attendance and things like that. Uh, also badges can be automatically generated as often happens in games. Looking at some of the websites that now feature badging, you'll find it in teacher education programs. You'll see in cases like this where badges can be given for being supportive members of the community. That's one type of badging system. You can also see in open colleges, like this one in Australia, where badges are being used in a variety of ways. One of them is to actually document the work that students do helping each other. This particular student got a hero badge and acknowledged how much work it really was. You'll see badges very often in the field of computer science. Here's one that Carnegie Mellon is developing to give credit for this fast-paced world of virtual robots. If you drill down through that particular system at Carnegie Mellon, you'll find that the badges are not accidental. There's a system that really helps you figure out why you would use badges. It also shows how badges can serve as an assessment tool, but it gets rather sophisticated. It talks about the hierarchy among the badges, shows you guidelines for creating good badges, and if you want to be taken seriously, you really have to think about these areas. As online courses are growing too, they're getting too large for individual assessment and badges are becoming an area for peer evaluations within these MOOCs. Now Mozilla, which started Firefox, started Netscape, is leading some of the movement towards badging. If you go to their website, you'll find at their open badges area, you can download open source software that can allow you to create your own badges. And it's rather sophisticated if you really start drilling down through their website. You'll find that if you really want to create powerful badges, you're going to have to be looking at standards and systems that will allow your badge to be recognized by a broader audience. And if you really drill down through the Mozilla site, you'll find that there's not only a lot of programming, but there's a lot of education detail that goes into creating appropriate credentials, very much like a hierarchical higher education system. Badging, though, is coming out now through web-based environments where you can learn collectively and how do you go about documenting this learning. So you'll see badges emerging at other organizations like P2PU, which is peer-to-peer -peer university, where very often computer programming operations create badges. And you'll see that there are learning communities that create their own badges and there are software companies coming out that make it easy to create badges. Now I've been using badge.us which is a pretty simple system that allows you to create badges. I created this badge to document work in the virtual world and you can see I went in through a menu that allowed me to simply fill in these type of areas and when I actually go to produce the badge I can email them to people. Now badges can be used in a variety of ways and this is just an example of how you might use a badge to encourage the youth to move towards thinking a little more systematically about the work they're doing in high school and you could actually use badges to model some of the work that students will do when they move from 
high school into a career. Badges of this nature could be somewhat fun. They could have a survivor badge. You can move into the um, types of analysis that are done in organizations where you look at whether people can generate solutions. You can use um, a lot of badges to encourage growth in movement within students and from moving from high school into higher levels of learning. And what I would be asking you to do is think about how when you are considering developing a badge, what's going to make it a good badge? Ask yourself, who's going to issue those badges? What do you actually have to do to earn a badge? And when you earn them, how are you going to display them? If you address a lot of these qualities, you're going to have some good badges and a very useful activity.